Hi and welcome to Peacemake TV. In this short video for Elemento, I'm going to answer a question that Darren Wilcock asked about overlaying text on top of an image using Elemento. So I'm going to take you through and show you how easy it is to do that and hopefully this will give you an insight into how flexible this plugin actually is. So let's take a look at that right now. Okay, so I've got WordPress open and I've got a sample page ready to start working on. So we're going to switch Elementor on first of all, so we can start editing the page using that editor. And as you can see, we've got a normal page layout. First thing we're going to do is just say, let's add a new section. So we're going to set this to be a full width section. And we'll just click to insert that there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the column. And then I can start working with actually setting the way the column looks. So as you can see, we've now got the option to do things like background type and border types and so on. And that's applying to the column, not the content of it. So if I click to click to classic, you can see that now I can add an image. So if I click on that, I go to my media library and I'm going to choose an image that I want to work with. Well, we'll choose this photographic laptop and we'll say insert media. Now nothing's showing up because at the moment the content is actually empty. So once we put something in there, you'll see the background image will start to display. But we've also got a range of different options on how this image is actually going to interact with the page. So we can say what position do you want to work with. So for this example, I'm going to say center center, but you can choose any of the options in there. We can choose the attachment. In other words, how will this interact with the page? Do we want it to scroll with the page or is it going to be fixed? So we say scroll. Do we want it to repeat? For this example, I don't want any repeat on this. I'll say no, and we say size. I'm going to say cover. Now, I'm not going to apply any border or any border radius or shadows or anything on this because I just want this to be the container for our actual text. So I'm going to click the plus to add in a new item. And for this example, I'm going to put a heading in there. So I'm just going to drag that, drop it in there. And as you can see, as soon as I do that, part of our background image shows up. So Next thing I'm going to do is style this text element, and then we'll look at how we can make this show more of the image. So once I've got that selected, you can see now I've got the context menu on the left hand side. So I'm going to choose, I'm not going to worry about too much about the size, the HTML tag and so on. I'm going to set the alignment to be centered. I am come over to style and I'm going to change the typography and the color. So I'm going to choose white to be the color I want to work with. And that's fine. So we choose white. And the typography, I'm going to come in there and I'm going to choose custom because I want to override the default setting. So once we do that, you can see we've got a whole range of new options available and we can start customizing the size, the position, the font and so on. So I'm going to bump this up to be quite large to take up most of our element. And I'm going to change the font family and I'm going to choose railway. I'm going to set the weight to be 200, so it's a, quite a thin font. You can change the transform if you want to set things to be uppercase, capitalized, lowercase, and so on. And we can change the style if you wanted to have normal italic and what have you. If you've got multiple lines, you can use your line height. We can adjust the spacing so we can contract or expand that out to get it looking exactly as we want. So let's just space that out a little bit more. That's pretty cool. I like that. So we now go to advanced. You can see we now edit the element set style itself. Now the element is not the column. It's the text block that we have available or the, the heading block. So what I can do is I can apply mar margins or padding to this. So if I want to, I can uncheck that because I don't want to link these together. And I can come to the margin section and I can say, let's put a margin of 150 pixels in there. I do the same on the bottom. And you can see once we do that, that now expands the space around the text or heading element and allows us to see more of the image. Now, obviously we can adjust that and see more or less of it. We can also apply an animation. So when this comes on screen, we can just have it animate in. So you can see we've got a range of different options. So we can say, well, let's try bounce down. And that's what it's gonna look like, which, okay, we quite like that. Now, if I come to the background and border, I can apply some more styles to this again. I can say, well, what do I wanna do? I wanna use a border type, I wanna use a solid border. And we're using that around this particular element. So stick with me i'll show you what i'm going to do now so we'll say we'll have one pixel border on there and we'll set the color to be white that's cool and the border radius we'll set to one pixel we'll apply a shadow to it and okay that looks a little bit rubbish but if we go back to our style sorry if we go back to advanced i should say 
And instead of using a margin, we use padding. So let's just get rid of these margins, set those back to zero. So it compresses that down. Now let's put a margin. Let's uncheck these. We don't want everything linked again. So we're going to say 150 for the top, 150 for the bottom. And now we've kind of created a pretty cool looking style. We've got an indented text block with a drop shadow, a key line around it, and the image behind. So what I can do now, if I want to, is I can come down to background and border, and I'm gonna choose, I don't want an image, I don't wanna put an image on top of an image, but I could if I wanted to, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna set this to be black, and then I'm gonna adjust the opacity on it. So you can see the effect that we're building up now. We've created a pretty cool looking head in. So if we take a look at that now, you can see we've got a heading that animates in, We've got a darker background, we've got a key line or stroke around it, a drop shadow, and then the rest of the image sitting outside that. So pretty cool how quick and easy you can stack those different styles on top of each other. You can apply it to the element itself, the widget. In this case, we've got the heading widget, and also apply it to the actual column itself. So you can see we can easily build up pretty cool effects on there. So before we wrap up, let's take a quick look at what this looks like on the page itself. There's two ways we can do that. We can just shrink down the edit column on the left hand side and get a preview where it'll hide everything else. And as you can see, looking pretty good. Or we can come down, we can hit save to make sure that all our changes have been saved. Click the X in the bottom left hand corner and say view page. And that'll open up a new tab and show us exactly what it looks like with the animation effect and everything in place. So hopefully you can see, pretty cool. So I think that's pretty cool for what is a completely free plugin add-on for WordPress. As I've said before on the other videos I've done for this, download your own copy, install it, try it out. I think you're really going to like it. It's very fast, works with any theme, and it's completely free. What's not the love? Anyway, I hope that's answered your question. I hope that's shown you how easy it is to build these elements up. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.